Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear and I am a reader and a writer. And today for this video I am here to announce the six books that my team Book Invasion has selected to continue reading completely for the self-published science fiction contest. The link is down below if you are curious in learning more about this contest. Real quick, basically what has happened is 300 books have been submitted, divided among 10 teams, so that's 30 books a team, and we have read 10 to 20 percent to select our top finalists out of those groups to read completely. And my group chose to do six because we feel we're slower readers, and that gives us a little more time than to enjoy what we are reading. So that gives us a little bit more time to actually read the books before the end of phase one, which phase one ends at the end of January. Here to show you the six books that my group has selected. Some of these books I have a physical copy for already because I bought them. That is not a requirement to be a judge, but I like to read physically. So I am buying the six books so that I can read it because that's going to change my experience of reading the books as well. Also, a lot of my my personal reading time is in the hour before I go to sleep and that's when I am no electronics, so ebooks aren't going to be read during that time. I have four of the six books. I am going to be buying the other two. That way they all have the same shot with me. Going with the first book that my team has chosen and that is Melody by David Hoffer. If you want to know my impressions of it, I'm going to say go watch my other video where I talk about my impressions of all the books that I sampled for this contest. For this one, I'm just going to give you the description on the back of the book, and that is Childhood Therapy Cured Stephen Fisher of Disturbing Visions and the Delusion of Having Come from Another World, but when his daughter obsesses over a star in the night sky, he fears that his genetic legacy may have burdened her with the same illness. His sanity is then shattered when he loses his child and the military abducts him, claiming that she recorded a song broadcast from another world. A voice inside Stephen's head convinces him that he can bring his daughter back to life. What he discovers instead is a stunning truth about himself, his child's destiny, and fate of the entire human race. So, one of our books. Next I have a space Girl from Earth by Christina McMullen. Ellie Whitmore is no ordinary girl, even if her parents weren't internationally famous celebrities. Her six foot four inch height and oddly spotted complexion would make her stand out in any crowd, but never would she have guessed she was an alien from far across the galaxy, or that hidden within her genetic makeup lies the Kurobi, an ancient and powerful relic housing the forbidden knowledge of her people. Knowledge some would sacrifice everything to possess. Worse, it isn't just the malevolent government who wants the Kroby. Her own mother can't resist the draw of ultimate power, and the one person Ellie might be able to trust is an unrepentant assassin who may be responsible for her life's upheaval. Now, she must travel to a distant planet and unlock the secrets to restoring peace and ending tyranny. But how can anyone expect her to save the galaxy when she can't even pass organic chemistry? Next, I have Echoes of Another Earth by J. Daniel Layfield. And the synopsis for this one, a scientist in hiding, an admiral on the brink of treason, a man who has lived hundreds of versions of his life across the same number of dimensions. Three paths converge in one dimension, their actions will affect them all. Josh hasn't really felt like himself since the first time he died. It's funny that what you can get used to. With his next jump into another Josh's life, he may finally get some answers, but does he want to hear them? Better question, can he trust the scientists being hunted by his past? Whatever Josh chooses, his actions will either aid in saving this dimension from destruction or add it to a long list of ones destined to end. Then we have The Stars Within by Lena Allison Knight. For Karel Evandra, her psionic powers have always meant three things, mandatory service to a multi-galactic corporation, a luxurious lifestyle as a prized asset, and an electronic collar that will kill her if she steps out of line. As a powerful telekinetic, she spent the last 10 years of her life in the corporate military, fighting anyone and anywhere the, com the company demands. 
while she may resent her gilded cage and obedience to her corporate master's cold directives. Everyone knows that escape is impossible, and defiance risks not just her own life, but also the life of the person closest to her, Galhan Ambrel, her lover and fellow bound psionic. But when Galhan's service contract is suddenly sold to a distant oligarch, Corel learns that obedience was not the guarantee of safety she once thought and that escape may not be as inconceivable as she was taught to believe. When a mission brings her into contact with an unexpected ally, she must decide how far she can go and how much she is willing to risk for freedom. Next we have The Trellis by Jules Cantor, and I just want to say I like this cover. This wasn't the original cover I saw for it, but I like this one. The world turns, the ice caps melt, and the dust belt creeps eastward. Cyberpunks might do their thing in Gora, Melbourne, or Daegu, but in Chicago, Debbie Peck is a conflict mediator fighting for relevance and her next paycheck. So, when her headhunter offers her an interview at the Jefferson Trellis, one of the last bastions of American prosperity, she jumps at the opportunity. She lands right in a dead man's shoes. As Debbie navigates her new position in six counties, homicide detective Melody Jackson investigates the murders occurring around the trellis. They each untwine the tendrils of a secret creeping through its corner offices. Like the botanical gardens at the trellis's base, their worlds weave between the lush, the stark, the delicate, and the deadly. And then, the last book that our team chose is Echogenesis by Gary Gibson. From the moment Sam Newman and 14 others awaken next to the burning wreckage of a spacecraft, they're faced with a constant struggle to stay alive on a seemingly uninhabited planet light years from home. Worse, the last any of them remember, they were back home on Earth, at a time when interstellar travel was still no more than a distant pipe dream. Survival means finding out who, or what, brought them to this place. Yet what few answers they find amidst the steaming jungles and the ruins of that world defy all logic or sanity, and it soon becomes evident something has gone terribly wrong. Something that could mean the human race survival or its extinction. Those are the six that Team Book Invasion is reading completely all the way through, so stay tuned for more updates. You can also check out the main webpage to find out what the other teams are reading. I know at least two, maybe three teams have also announced what their ending books are or for these quarterfinals, I guess is what they're called. I'm enjoying this experience of judging self-published science fiction. It's really fun, especially to kind of see the variety of science fiction that is out there. And I want to thank all the authors who have submitted for doing so, for being brave enough to let other people read your work. Thank you and have a great day.